Hey everybody, welcome back to another Regulator Talk podcast. Still got this thing rolling. I don't know how people still want to be on here. Always asking me to be on here. This time we got my good friend, Mr. Beegs, and he wants to be introduced to uh, some tunes. So we'll go do 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 do. It's like game show music. How do you feel about that? Uh, I was thinking like a, like a subtle music, kind of like jazz. I don't own any but instruments though, so like. I've you never, ever heard I've of never non-copy- <laughs> non-copyrighted music? That's what it is, man. Yeah. Well, I, I don't have like a sound. I need to get a sound bar, actually. That'd be something to invest in. <laughs> no, you just edit you just in post. You just edit, edit in some this is unedited, sweet jazz. Raw. This is like my Monday nights. It is. It is like <laughs> you upload all. <laughs> you upload all ten gigs. Yeah. Speaking of no, it's not that much. Trust me. Um, speaking of raw, you ever see? That was a bit of a segue for a talking point. You ever see the guy who actually eats raw food on YouTube for like a living, on his like YouTube channel? He's probably got a tape on him by now. I think he does. Uh, Goof showed me him about probably like three weeks ago, and God, it was uh, some of, it was the craziest thing ever. The guy eats like raw meats like whether it's like just you know chicken bacon like okay, turkey yeah, yeah that's actually that's actually the most that's the dumbest thing ever in my life wait wait till you hear about this one i saw a video of him going to the park and eating like unpasteurized uh butter like it was like a candy bar he was just chilling there chewing on like a butter stick and like he had unpasteurized oh, wow. <laughs> and he had unpasteurized milk and was just sipping on it and and mm. he was like this is my daily schedule you know every day and then and then he went back home and he made like he like cracked a couple eggs and i was waiting for the part for him to actually put the eggshells in the drink he did it though so or like crunch on the eggshells i think if you're gonna be that devoted to you know uh the cause of potentially giving yourself a tapeworm or some disease or, you know something by eating raw food salmonella just go, like... just go straight for it yeah <laughs> just go straight for it like you know, get get the eggs, not cooked or anything, not mixed at all, just, you know, straight up you ate them like that or drank them, you know, the juice. But you got to eat the uh, the eggshells, like like a complete, you know, devotion you think, to like, it. You would, think, you would think after a while he'd just be like, man, fuck this, but he, he stayed with it for about three weeks now, and I got to say, maybe... Maybe no, he's really channel's smart. been going on for, like, years. And I was like, well, Goof, what's, you know, what's his number one rated... Uh, like video and it had nothing to do with like his you know odd eating habits it was like, charades it was yeah. probably like my wife's pregnant <laughs> well i feel bad for him for channel update one million uh, subscribers he's one of those people that you would make like a video on and being like the the riot you know uh do you know that michael mccredden guy on youtube who does the before they were famous he deserves one of those videos you know before salmonella poisoning or before before, before tapeworm. tapeworm yeah and uh before total organ failure <laughs> and uh, one of the things in uh what recently happened to him was the way he was able to afford this diet quote unquote was because diet. of like his girlfriend and his girlfriend's family had a bunch of money or something and then i guess they broke up and so he wasn't able to afford the diet and he went like you know dark and shadowed off the grid and people thought he died and he was like hey i'm back they had like this crazy you know looking background and people were like worried about him it's crazy you know it's one of those very low tier the guy YouTubers cha- who, the guy like, changed his wallpaper and everyone flipped <laughs> the fuck out yeah blink twice if you're uh being held captive it's like <laughs> one of those very low by yourself <laughs> <laughs> you're holding yourself blink twice i'm yeah. depressed save me yeah help <laughs> one of those help. very low tiered youtubers that has actually a very unique quality and unique audience to them like oh you mean rebel yeah well no because it's nothing special it's just gaming or talking to buddies or you know but him Blank it's like his words. thing is like you know i'm gonna be devoted to eating raw food and unpasteurized food and uh I, would you say truly organic at this point? Well, let's think about it. Is the food organic? Is he like killing it, eating it himself? Is he like oh, getting it from an organic uh, that's, provider? That's the question. I don't know. I mean, he just, you know. No, he's, that's not even a diet. He's just actually being stupid. <laughs> like, I want to see a video. I want of you to podcast. You know what? I want you to get 
podcast this guy find this guy talked about him yeah find him talk to him about what the fuck is wrong with him we actually have a rapper coming up on the podcast a bit of a spoiler alert um a rapper yeah are you not gonna tell you're not gonna say the name no it's tj the prophet you know it's a it's a buddy of mine who we were both you know in this whole nerdy wrestling community um and then he kind of phased out of it and i phased out of it because you know life just gets you busy with uh schoolwork and then recently he uh, I saw on his Facebook he was getting really big and he was saying like hey you know like I really want to do the whole rap thing and I listened to some Prophet, of the stuff wait, Prophet TJ Allen TJ the Prophet in uh, Chicago I think yeah Chicago Illinois and he's got SoundCloud that'd be the best way to find him and his stuff's actually not bad um I'm not crazy. the greatest thing you ne- the greatest thing you never heard. I'm not crazy about, like, SoundCloud rappers, but his stuff is actually pretty good. He has that, like, element of, like, nerdiness to it, like, a little bit of, like, um, like, Dragon Ball Z, like, anime. His gimmick is he's Blasian. He's a black Asian, right? Like, this, let's be completely honest, that is his gimmick. Um, oh, good lord. Is this entire podcast, is this just <laughs> you talking about Raw Meat Man and your Raw, DJ well, yeah, Blasian? Hyping up another dude. podcast. While you're in the podcast, with, is mine just like a big advert? <laughs> no. Speaking of which, it's time for our sponsors. Well, yeah, thank yeah. you for thank you, Humble Bundle, for your special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to Humble Month. Get your Humble Monthly subscription now. <laughs> it's in the link down below. Game, game, instant gaming. charges. Yeah, game, instant it's gaming. Game. <laughs> Would you like Viter Energy Mints or Catalyst Energy Powder? Should be fucking. <laughs> should be ripping your fucking oh, sponsors. <laughs> Well, nine yards. We're only seven minutes in. Come on, we still have plenty of time. All right. No, seriously. Bitch. All right. Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Can Where'd I come you? from? Yeah, Where'd just, I go? You kind of just showed. Oh, dude, up I've been this. I've been. I've been the same. Like, like, like internet wise. Yeah, like. Let me, okay, let me explain my internet internet life to everybody. Like, well, it's actually pretty invigorating. I don't know if we have that much time, but okay. <laughs> All right. How, how See, I'll be quick. How crazy is it? I'll be. I'll be. I'll be quick and summarizable. All right. If that's a word. Not. All right, so I started off my entire life on Skype, uh, Minecraft server. I met with some guys, became a head admin, ran with the server. <laughs> then they broke up, and then I went to another server, and then I like started being a dick on there. Left, stole half their staff, and made my own server. <laughs> Couldn't pay for it. Left, dropped Minecraft forever after playing mob packs for a year. <laughs> and then uh, went to DayZ for a long time. That was weird. <laughs> And then I, you're not fucking saying anything, so it's scaring me. I'm just listening, no, okay? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I no, do. Okay, I'm so listening from, to you. From, from there, I uh, I wanted to go back to playing Minecraft, like a drug server where you grow drugs and shit. And then I got out of that because it literally ruined my life. And then uh, yeah. and then one day, I just loaded up a bunch of mods or whatever. And uh, I was looking around Arma, and I was like, well, let's fucking play Vietnam. I see they got a Vietnam uh, sim. And the first thing I saw was yours. You didn't have a fucking password, so I just joined up. Yeah, I don't play the <laughs> password. That's the thing is, like, some people... I ask people, I'm like, why do you play with a password? And they're like, so people don't show up. And then people ask me, they're like, why do you play without a password? I'm like, so people will show up, and we get to meet new people. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like... That's legit yeah. kind of how I got... That is, I literally, that is my can't, concept, and it worked. I right? literally came out of nowhere, and everyone just... No one really asked any questions. No one said anything. I just kind of showed up, and I asked fire, and no one said anything. You showed up one day on a random Vietnam thing we were doing, which was actually... I think the first one we did with you wasn't anything crazy, but, like, the next couple ones we did where we were flying choppers and going down in the uh, uh, the rice fields. Well, I'm, not, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I've, all, I've only ever had one real op with you that I felt was real in my life life in in star sim or in just like ever overall? really like what <laughs> it was the it was the one where we ran across and we finally sh- we shot out that fucking uh jedi guy jedi. you never know, like you're you're like someone come down here and face me and then we're always like let's just fucking shoot him it, it's odd enough because that is like the go home story for isr you know but i, I felt was a, like well that's because that's the last Last time we ever did a star sim. But I felt like it wasn't the last time because there were um, two more after this. There was like a little Rogue One story, which was the uh, the Alderaan one. And then there was a one oh, after yeah. that, which was, uh, I think it was like One Last Tomorrow or something like that. And um, the majority of that was just testing out 
the the new stuff. Um, well, that that was the last one. That crazy. was the last one before the break. But in terms of like big story, that was like the go home show, and I felt like it was good, but at the same sense, like I don't know, I felt like we were always limited to um, your retardation, the performance of the people. <laughs> Because we had a good, we had a good concept, no, we had a good story, more, and then we'd always have, ish. you know, some people that would be like, "I'm going rogue. I'm gonna go arrest, you know, Lego. <laughs> like, call it like we need to be, you know, unified." Well, no, it's hard. To, <laughs> it's hard to have these ops when a you make them thirty minutes Elaborate. before the fucking op. That's that's not bad though. <laughs> no. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> we, we'll be playing the game and we run up on a base and it's like, oh look, a spider walker. Nice. None of us brought a fucking. Well, that's AT not my fault. AT. That's not my fault. Oh fuck you! You would kind of fuck okay. you. I I tell you guys. I I'm was like, bomb squad, not AT squad. I, t- <laughs> I tell you guys, I'm like be a jack of all trades. Okay, but here's the thing to to combat that. Okay, a couple days ago, I was playing with patches, all right, and um he wanted me to show the arfs like how it's done keep in mind i've only done arf like you know maybe like three times up until it's fucking awesome but arfs are really cool i compare them to if done right they can be rangers or they could be navy seals you know and at some points they could just be where everything goes wrong because they're the first ones to engage however they're not supposed to be they're supposed to be undercover you know very low key and all that um what we did was i took is and paro um is is essentially just a more older grown up version of Lego. Uh and Pero uh, <laughs> yeah. is unique in his That's own sense. That's actually really true. He's actually really quiet. Yeah, too. He's, he's unique in his own sense. So Patches was like, Hey, go show them how it's done. You know, and I I, you know, just made it work. I'm not any crazy ARF guy or ranger or scouting team, but uh, you know, we followed the coastline, we set up you know, a little trench. We hid from an AET that was coming straight at us. Like, I told him, I was like, just just stay on the ground, right? Don't have your weapon out. Just look straight on the ground, and the AI won't interact with you or won't notice you because it's nighttime, and they don't have night vision, but they have flashlights, so don't get in the flashlight range or they're going to light you up. Uh, We did really good. And the whole thing with your EOD and the the walkers is uh, we were on a tower. We left the tower, rappelled down, whatever. Uh, We went behind a droideca, put bombs on it and we were basically the distraction to draw all of the forces from the town to the pier so the ground forces could go and rescue the vips ground forces had their own problems so this distraction went off we blew up the droideca with the explosives we got behind one all right those things will kill you you know if you get within so much of it but we managed to get behind it without them noticing uh put the explosives on it blow it up we dive off the pier like u.s navy seals swim underwater avoid like 30 or 40 droids and ground team comes in and tries to save the vips but things go south because they couldn't figure out what building they were on even though we marked it for them um so that that's my like little side story of how you got to work with what you got and if you got a, d- a couple demo blocks and some emp mines you can still destroy you know walkers See, and stuff like that it's really just gonna at, be you're really good at, you're really good at playing in the game but like whenever you're zeus and man it's like another world i think it's probably the opposite though i think if i'm playing as a unit i'm really good as i'm a zeus i'm even better but if i'm just playing for fun i'm not good at all like if we're playing anastasia or something like that i don't think i'm good at all because i think yeah because yeah I I let everyone that. know i fucking banned him yeah. From playing Anastasia yeah, with this such a cop. I get a message from B. But how okay, I said, hey, I'm gonna stand back and I'm gonna do artillery because I we just got this new mod called the Just Build. Me and, and Goof really told you it. twenty times not to shoot smoke. I didn't and shoot you shot smoke. Sm- I you shot smoke. smoke! I didn't shoot smoke. <laughs> and you kept using J Arsenal. Yeah. Cause no! I, Cause I wanted to try out the new weapons. No. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of Anastasia is to not have the weapons you want and have to like adapt. You don't get to be a gorilla outfit and be like, "Well, what's this? A high power like fucking rifle? Well, let's go fucking shoot this anti tank rifle at somebody and see what happens." I was a police happens. officer. With snake's head. Yeah, I was a police officer. All right, I did. I had uh, silver ballers like from uh, Hitman. Are you a Hitman yeah. fan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You a Hitman? Ah, no, not really. Didn't not get really. the placement. 
I think I don't know if friend who was. You know how people were really uh fifty fifty on the whole Fallout seventy six thing, but it's like a big shift from Fallout being a single player only experience to now you can play it with your friends. I think if Hitman was to do that, I don't know how they would do it, but I think it actually be decent. I think they couldn't do the big MMO thing, but that Fallout seventy six is trying to do, but Maybe, I think they fucked up the mo- It's maybe, already fucked up. Maybe like they've start already, small they've already two fucked people up. or four people. What, 76? They've already fucked. Yeah, they already fucked up and they haven't released it yet. What do you mean? And it's not like gameplay. It, they literally already fucked up and haven't released the game yet. What do you mean? They fucking put it on Beth said net and they didn't fucking put it on Steam. I think I think that's, that's no, their that's the, first big yeah. flaw in this is how trying to cut out, trying to cut out the middleman? Yeah, that's they're, what they're trying to do. They're trying, they're trying, to, to, they're cut trying to cut out Steam. out Steam, but Steam's like the biggest the words. Well, oh, the biggest, Big, the biggest, biggest, biggest. I don't know. Middleman. I was trying to say. Ever I was trying for. to say bigs and biggest at the same time. <laughs> biggest, but um, no, Steam is the biggest. You know, PC platform like GOG and Origin and UPlay and all these other ones. Like they're they're just not as big. You know. I think you play so shit it has to like piggyback on the scene. <laughs> I th- yeah, they're like we can connect to Steam. I think um Bethesda will probably have a thing where you can connect it to Steam, you know, so you can still have your friends from Steam also, but you'll have your Bethesda.net, you know, account. I think that's gonna be really annoying too, is connecting your Bethesda.net account and figuring out your friends and trying to join friends. I think that'll be a hassle unless they do the I think servers. They're gonna, I, think, you know. I think honestly they're going to be independent for themselves and they're going to force players to have to buy their shit on their, like, on their fucking platform. I think that's what they want. They want that. They don't want to pay Steam that middleman fee anymore. Yeah. I and... think they're done with that shit. I think they're done with, like, Steam, like, giving away their game for, like, a dollar. Yeah. Like Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition for a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> it's a like, really good game. You should have played it by now, but at that call, point you're kind of like, Duty, just play it. Call of Duty, Call of Duty Black Ops is still twenty dollars. Just let know that. Well, that's the other thing too is like if you look at like GTA Five, that was sixty dollars for the longest time on on Xbox, on PlayStation. Like, and this was like back when we had you know GTA on the old consoles, and then you put it on PC, and it's like. Eh, two months later, thirty dollars. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. The PC market on Steam is a uh, is a great and bad thing. It's great because you don't spend as much money. There's always a sale, always something going on. But it's probably really bad for like developers, from a sense that, you know, if their game is poorly received automatically, like that game's getting getting chopped. Like within the next couple months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's game is over. Up, especially if it's like, right around the uh, summer sales like, time. Like when when uh Total War Rome two, do you hear what happened to that? Yeah, the well, recently. Yeah, the uh the the whole girl general thing and how that dev told one to fucking either stop playing or be quiet or something like that. Or yeah, it was either stop playing or get mods or whatever for it. Which is like not an appropriate way of talking about that or addressing the situation. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a crazy like Rome two person, but I looked into it. And apparently, like, the statistics of that happening are very slim, and it's yeah. only certain like civilizations that will, that can have generals. Yeah, like, yeah, that, it was based on. So. It's based on. I don't know. Honestly, people should have gotten pissed at it. Like the, they released a picture where like, all the generals were girls you could like recruit, yeah, and then the guy figured out that photoshopped. They, you know, <laughs> yeah. The, well, the person figured out that that that's not that's not how that works. They're like, that's not how that works. You can't do that unless you were and, extremely unlucky. You know. Yeah, I and mean, it's not even unlucky. The girl generals in that game are actually really good. So it's not even it's not even a real like it's just people thinking they know history, but they don't. Yeah. I mean, like the people at the battle feel like uh, let's get into this controversy. The people at the battlefield want to complain. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, I, we're I, jump into this one. I, on the battlefield. I, I'll actually I'll agree with them. Get the fucking SG, SJW out of ba- out of history. Just because you want a girl and a black guy and a fucking squad together, it's not realistic. And it's like, well, it's not supposed to be accurate. It's like, look, when I play these games, I want it to be accurate. Yeah, I, I want, want to play to, I, World War II. I, I want to play World War II, and it's like, well, don't, don't play our game. And that's not a fucking appropriate response to something like that. I still stand, you don't by, t- like, uh, I still stand by my statement that World War II games really started sucking when they got rid of the Pacific uh, front and all that. Um, it's hard to... It's not hard. I don't think so. It's, like... 
it's just island hopping essentially you know well then like, like pick uh, your yeah, island that's true. And, and they're not even the islands aren't usually that big anyways like pick your island go to town go, like that is where flamethrowers and all that should be like uh glorified almost for like the violence and i'll actually the i'll actually of them there you know i'll double down on that and, t and say uh i i really i really mm -hmm. appreciate the uh What's it called? I really appreciate Call of Duty World at War and Big Red One and shit like that. Yeah, that's where they I really, really appreciate they, that. I, 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 I people have done it before. They go through and like this is inconsistent. This is inconsistent. But small things. I shouldn't have to play a game. And be like, why the fuck is there a girl in my squad? And B, why does she have a prosthetic robotic arm? <laughs> What is happening? And it's, it's like um, it's kind of like the Rome Two thing. Like the very, 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 very small percentage that 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 happened historically or just in the game. But in life, it's like I looked up into it, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it happened once." You know, a prosthetic arm and a yeah. Woman. No, it was it was One a time. It was a, it was a French. I'm pretty sure I may be wrong. It's a French, French resistance. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It was total obscure bullshit, and they're like, "Well, we can take this and throw her in like the first Marine Battalion or, or regiment, which wasn't in Europe. I know that." Yeah. But like, it's like, no, you fucking can't. You look at the artwork for the fucking game. It's like they have like two pairs of like sand goggles, and like, have you seen that picture? Where they... Huh? I think we lost Beaks. That's it. We already lost them, guys. Their head and what around their neck? <laughs> Two. Uh, it's just like, are you thinking? Are you just at that point? It's just a money grab, which EA has been more and more and more. I would have really uh, thought EA would have got their uh, their whole si together, their but... situation yeah. straight to say. Yeah, no. After there's, there's Battlefront Two, out. because Battlefront Two was like, okay, they took a massive blow, but Battlefield Five. It's something something so easily like I still stand by this. It it is absurdly and like ridiculously hard to mess up a World War Two game. Like World War Two is so easy, you know. Yeah. Like how do you mess up World War Two? It's you, not even easy. You just gotta bring in like five old men. Yeah. Who like make their like make the little like fucking you know those little packages those of little plastic. those little uh, documentaries and all that on like a history yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like you literally gotta bring in one guy like five guys and guess what yeah. they'll tell you everything you need to know ever. Get but, something but, on a woman in a squad with a prosthetic arm you know, and it's, the guy would be like, Western. no, you fucking can't. You can't fucking do that. You're like, well, why not? And it's like, well, women can't be in World War Two. It's I like, well, no, Western. they're in, they're in fucking they're in fucking factories making shit. Unless you're Unless, okay, if it was a Soviet Union, I would totally be for it. If it was a Soviet Union, I'd be like, yes, put women out there. They're always on the front sniping. I would gladly do like a like a Soviet woman sniping mission. That would be dope. One of my favorite um, World War II games has to be Medal of Honor, The Rising Sun, where you start off on Pearl Harbor. A little bit cheesy, you know, oh, with, wait, with wait, the wait, intro wait. when it comes to the whole, like, looking in Hawaii and the letters What was it called? That. What was it? Metal Rising Honor, Sun? Rising Sun. Um, oh, I think I played that. It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has oh, amazing, I played this, yeah! It has an amazing multiplayer also. For its time, like PlayStation 2 multiplayer, you know, you just hook up with your buddies and go to town. Um, but the that's when it's like, that's when like you're like in the beginning, it's like that, but, but you're on that like, skate boat and you're like, what, like you're driving away from it, like such exploding and shit. Yeah, the, the, it's um, like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I'm looking at graphics it, right now. It looks you, so ugly. You see the Arizona explode. The Medal of Honor is a game, or not a game, it's a franchise that, you know, as it progressed, it did get worse, but it started off so strong. You know how they're remastering all these games now? If they were to truly remaster uh, Medal of Honor, um, what's the one everyone loves? The, the one with, like, D-Day, I think. It's like Pacific Assault or something? That's that's not D-Day. D-Day is like something else. Yeah. I think it is Pacific Assault. Let me see. Metal of Honor. D-Day. Frontline? Is that what it's called? Allied Assault. Yeah. At and Omaha they, Beach. There's... There's a, that one was really good. If they were to remaster that and remaster... Um, I'll be honest with you. Rising there's been a Sun, lot of really failures. There's been a lot of failures lately with the... World War Two games, yeah, like Call of Duty, World War Two, like come on. That guys. wasn't that bad, but it was basically Saving Private Ryan. 
the video game like you look at it yeah. you start off a very uh, an extremely uh you can make the big correlation between saving private ryan's beginning and this game's beginning like the goriness of it the people getting shot you know jumping off the side of the boat the u-boats and everything like just, you could do scene for scene you know even parts where like you get you know your life saved and uh well, okay well, saving well, okay, the guy well, near the end that's the only thing that really distincts between like you know private ryan wasn't in a concentration camp come near the end of the game i think that part they did do really good at the end of the game um just to like finally cap it off but the big thing with that war, world at war did that world war ii did not do is world war ii only told one story which isn't bad because it you know was interesting and it was well one but, told, but, like, but war to war told it branched off like it literally gave room for people in like black ops and stuff like that which um i don't know the guy who appeared there the old russian guy but like they branched off for that they did the whole like are you gonna save the private or save the sergeant come the end of the uh the pacific front or whatever um you have the whole russian storyline which i thought had a pretty decent ending you know and the the guy that carried the flag that got burned with the flamethrower I remember that happening, so I, mean, I think it's just, that was really good. It, it, on, it's just I don't know. And you start it's, off you as a POW. With, you, you think with the start of like this upcoming, what what would you call it? New graphics and new like voice actors. The yeah. multi million dollars put into it. Yeah. You would think that they would be able to like story get something <laughs> out there. Story like yeah. story like I, hell. I don't care about War Two games. Shouldn't even have multiplayer. I swear to God, they shouldn't. What is it? Like it's not it, it, multiplayer game. Like war games should not have multiplayer unless it's like past Vietnam, because that's when it gets fun. Like we like really Black Ops time. Crazy Vietnam game yet. Also, I don't know. Well, if I don't know. If it's a good Black thing Ops thing. was kind of Black Ops was kind of considered. They kind of the, hate Well, no, you were in Vietnam. Um, like what, shooting once? at people during the Tet Offensive, uh, twice I think. Twice. You, like, you like this is part where you like you go to like a crashed plane and yeah. like yeah, it's like a black mix. It's like a, what's it called a black a black op? Yeah, and you just go out there and you get it. No, it's just I don't, I don't. It's just not right. Like they're not doing the games right. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're not. The campaigns don't spec. Like, they're just looking at one spec like spec of like the actual war. Like there's like so much more to the war. Like there's. You know, there's I know there's operate there's op, there's a battle of the bowl which is all that shit but really what you want to look at is uh like no one said anything about Stalingrad like holy yeah, shit right? Stalingrad Stalingrad's what it's like one of the biggest wars like, or wars battles yeah. in human history and then there's like battle of curse which is like one of the biggest it's not it's not the biggest anymore but it's the biggest one of the biggest tank battles in ever and then you have Japan and China, like like massive like wars going on, like battles yeah, going over there. Never, they have. There's I don't so think much. Anyone's yeah. ever touched that ever in gaming history, and like or Oce or the Oceania era, or like it's the Philippines, it's the New Guinea, like it's like all these people. It's almost like with the or Germany Northern thing. Africa. I was say it's yeah, almost it's just, with like the yeah. Germany thing. They it, the big reason why we don't see much like of the history retold in Japan or Pearl Harbor or any of that anymore is because they don't want to offend. A very small market you know to, to appease the larger market and they don't want to you know offend the german market by including literal well, history literal history yeah you know, they, so, you know like, so they'll take know, everybody uh, else off because of that and i think even that small market would be like you know who cares like if you were to if you were to do an entire vietnam uh story game and Brand you still ended it off I think you could do a very good Vietnam storied game and you could still end it off with like, okay, America, you got to get out of there. And then you end off the game with the war was just beginning because they came home. And that's where you could play as like an African-American soldier and like come back home to racism and all honestly, that. Still and all. Honestly, honestly, so that is how you could honestly, still you could, you could, you could start, portray that. Right, you can like, if you wanted to make a, a game that made a message, fucking Vietnam would be the one. Yeah. Honestly, God. like, you really could with the black with, uh, with the black population in the war, like holy shit, like you could do so much with that. You could tell yeah. someone's story, throw them into the game, like 
I've read so many Vietnam books. You just throw them into the fucking world. Why could, you, why could you not, like, you know... Put them through time. Put the player through time. <laughs> make the No, make the player experience what he experienced. Make him experience the, like, terror. Like, you, put, like, make it fun at the same time, though, where it's like, oh, shit, fuck. And it's like, if you light your lighter this. at night, the fucking artillery the shit out of you. Like, I, was, I was thinking about this. There's only one Vietnam game that sticks with me in the back of my mind. Um, it's Rising Storm 2 Vietnam? No, stop it. <laughs> No, that game's fun. No, no, I'm talking about like story based, quote unquote. Um, it, this is during the PlayStation Two era when we got really good games and stories, even though the graphics horrible. But that was just the time period, um, which I think is a big thing now, where people are like, "We have really nice graphics, but the gameplay's horrible. And there's no story, and you know we're gonna focus everything into multiplayer because." Was it Battlefield Vietnam? No, it was Shell Shocked. You might not have heard of it. Um, let me look it up. I think there was actually two shell shocks, and I think that's why, like, you don't really hear much about it because the the first one, um, shell shock two. Nom sixty seven. Shell shock nom sixty seven. Yup. It. I remember playing that probably when I was probably. Oh, okay. You got the shit. It's got horrible reviews. Probably when I was too young to play. Uh, like violent video games. Yeah, I was like six years old, so I was probably too young to play violent video games, especially one about Vietnam. But I remember that one in particular uh, stuck out. Um, I mean, if you look on Google Images, you can see pictures of like troops with their heads on pikes and hanging bodies and napalm yeah. and you know Vietnam soldiers killing themselves and blowing each other up and the whole night. It's, no, it's just it, it's not really a betrayal of war. It, it's not so much that they're making statements that I give a shit about. I'm totally for making statements. It's about how you make a statement. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't just pull your ass something out of your ass and be like, "There's a woman. Look at this in World War II." <laughs> when I think of World War II, and it's always going to be like this. It's fucking men fighting, and the women are in the factories doing the hard work, and they're both doing their part. Just because the woman's not in the fucking field fighting, it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean it's fucking. Helping, yeah. Doesn't mean she's not fucking helping in the best way possible. The guy in the field couldn't fucking fight if it wasn't for the woman in the factory. Exactly. Like, not, I mean, look, look, look at Russia. They didn't have guns. Like, like, yeah, um, honestly, like they they made the women snipers because they're the best snipers because they recognize that shit. Like, it's I get it was a time before us, but like, you can't change history. That's the part that we're all fucking with. That like you're you're producing something on a mass scale, to people who are gonna buy it, and you're gonna confuse somebody and release false information that women were in World War Two which they were not on the American side. Fuck, they split the blacks and the whites, and sometimes the white people would go beat the shit out of the black people at nighttime. Did you know that? Yeah, crazy. They, yeah, they would go out, they would, white soldiers would leave their camp, go to a black camp, and beat the shit out of the black soldiers in the middle of war. So, no, there's no fucking acceptance. There's none of that. The moment that game should have started, the black, I, no, black guy, a black guy should have looked at him and been like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> like, there's no, there's none of that shit. The, the historical accuracy is almost, it's pukable. It's almost ridiculous. I remember and, on and, uh, 360, there was one game that took you throughout history and they, uh, they changed it because the whole premise of the game this is one of those rare, like, rare occasions where you could bring um, modern weaponry into a different time period because of the story it's trying to tell, even though it's a little weird and choppy a little bit. Um, I'll try to look up the game. I'm going to do that. And I remember, like, uh, you were a soldier brought, like, a Gatling gun to, like, Roman spear infantry and lit them up. And you went to, like, the Westerns with, like, a rifle and... You went to uh, the Battle of Gettysburg with, like, laser weapons or an M4 or something crazy. And, like, it just kept on, like, upping the ante of, like, your side is supposed to win. However, like, someone else is messing yes, with so history. No, like, <laughs> someone is messing with history. So you have to make sure history remains the same, even if you have to bring modern weaponry into it. Um, and I think that ultimately, like, messes up the timeline because history or technology advances faster than the history that you're trying to preserve look up i'm gonna try to find the game on it it's another one of those like interesting games that fell through the loop kind of like with shell shock you know but I don't, ah, know, like, I, I, I don't know i don't know i'm just i'm sick and tired of these game devs i'm not buying it anymore they're getting that's why i'm a, I'm a strictly indie player 
No, yeah. I barely buy AAA games unless it's from Bethesda. I don't know Beth- how to say their name correctly, Bethesda? so don't even try. Me. Like Bethesda, Maryland. So I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't buy those games. Like the last AAA game I bought. Here, actually, you know what? Go to my, go to my Steam. Go to my. What the fuck's my settings here? The game I think was called Darkest of Days. Here we go. No, that's not my. Is that it? For, okay. for anyone? Okay. Yeah, that's the game because there's a picture of a guy with a Gatling gun taking on Roman soldiers. That was. Let's a see. Game. Let's see. The last uh, AAA thing I bought at all was probably the witcher or maybe mm-hmm. oh yeah call of duty black ops 3 zombie chronicles in 2005 or uh, 2017 december 25th that's the last thing i bought that's triple a mm-hmm. because uh, i really wanted to play zombies again and it sucked and no one was playing it yeah real real fucking real fucking downer activision stop it's, making the game i just remember Five-year-old. there is a find the game i remember there was a time where it was like a drought where we had no world war ii games and now we get them, and it's like, this is what we waited like so post, long for. Like post scrotum, or the fuck it's called. I call it scrotum because it's, it's a penis. It sucks. It's a dick. <laughs> the game sucks. It's it, people, so glitchy. People overhyped it. That's the problem. No, they what happened was is that much. what happened was the people who fucking made it. I'm I'm speculating, so I don't even fucking know really. Yeah. Is what happened was is that they got a Kickstarter or a Patreon or the fuck, and yeah, they got like all this games. money. Yeah. Like a big fucking wave. They got all this money. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, look at this money we got. And they have no idea how to spend their fucking money or use it. So they just pissed it off on what... Uh, pissed on... Graphics. Pissed on. They, just pissed, they pissed their money away. and made the game look really good in pictures. And then you buy, And then they're like, oh, shit. We're running out of money. We can't actually put the real features into the game. And then yeah, they're like, well, what do we do now? You know, I well, think like, yeah, 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 yeah. would be cool, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, like, what the fuck we do? Well, would you know the Kickstarter? It's like, well, that's that's not right. They'll get pissed at us. Like, oh, well, then we'll just go ahead and we'll just make the game as as least playable as possible and we'll release it early access. <laughs> and they're like, well, okay. And then they released it and they charged. Wait, okay, let's look real quick. Uh, I think they probably like charge like $40 for base, I think. Let me check. And then yeah, there's, like, 30. different it's editions. Th- they'll ch- charge $30 for a broken fucking game. I feel like and... it was more than 30 originally. They might have dropped it down by 10 The reviews are mixed right now. So there's $30 normal edition, 45 which is deluxe, and 60 supporter. So let's just evaluate this from a AAA game standpoint of $60. What do you get for the $60 edition? The, uh... What is it called? The supporter edition. You get access to testing weekends. Okay. What the fuck is official that? art book? A, di- a digital, a digital official art book, uh, and a digital soundtrack. But you also get early access to U.S. Airborne, which is already in the standard edition. But the deluxe edition, they get so by paying. You get the same shit for the both of them. So by paying fifteen dollars more for the deluxe edition, you're able to get the soundtrack and the digital art book. All right. However, if you get the standard edition, you could still get the weekend testing and the game and the airborne. You'll just have to wait a little bit later for the airborne. Now, of course, the game's already out, so you know I think Air- airborne might be out or not. I don't know. It'd be pretty, pretty dumb if not. It's one of those, the game does look very nice. I'll say that, but you know. I'll, I'll say this: they spent a long time with the models they wanted these models to look really good and i'll give them that mm-hmm. i'll give them the models i'll give them the scenery the, aesthetically this game is goddamn beautiful mm-hmm. and they, i guarantee all the other things about it are wonderful but the, you can do that as much as you want but as long as this game does not have content yeah, as long as it has, has no nothing. meat yeah if it has nothing to do in it with the weapons it's like playing eden at it it's like loading in on arma 3 with nothing and just looking at like okay this yeah. is yeah, just looking around. It's like, yeah, okay, this is beautiful and all, but like, and it's really nice and the bullet drop and all that shit. But like, what the fuck are we supposed to do with this game? And if you do that, you're just not getting a good game. That's what they did. They released it, and it's not. It, honest to God, it's not even marked as early access right now. Yeah, I it's just that. They, this is this is a, this is a quote unquote finished game. It's not. It's not ready. 
And I, I'm starting to believe that people don't use uh, play testers anymore. Yeah, I, don't think I people, completely I don't, believe that too. Like, I don't, I don't think people think about using play testers. I still anymore. stand by the motto, and this is what I told Corvus with the whole Legion Studios thing. I said, look, people can say 4K models, 8K models, whatever, whole nine yards, okay. As long as my game doesn't look like it was uh, eight bit, you know, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think we've yeah. evolved from eight bit. Like I'll still deal with like two D games, but you know, three D is really the way to go. Two D sometimes it works, um, but you really want to have those people who will love your game, you know, and be devoted to it and break it. Like you can't just say it's out, and then everyone's like. <laughs> did you not play your own game? And it's like, no, nah, we had too much time, you know, working on it to play it. And I'm like, if you spend so much time working and you're not enjoying it and you're not getting any feedback and you don't have the people who are overly devoted to just playing it, like, you're not going to learn anything, you know. I I think I, one I just, game that was play tested to hell Yeah. Um, in my own experience is, uh, is uh, let's see here, what's it called? Oh, yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Five, the Phantom. Probably, yeah. That? Oh yeah, it's it really, was, you could tell. It's, like... really, it's a really, it's a really. They played the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. They thought it was good, and then they, and then they went back to work on it. Yeah, and they right. played the hell out of it, and it, no, they just went back and forth. It was a really fun time. Yeah, and you could obviously tell where people were like, "Oh, you have multiplayer, but like we just want to play single player." So no one cared about yeah. like multiplayer. Um, yeah you know and that might be yeah, the case no, no. with fallout though is like you might get a lot of people who will love playing fallout with their friends and you might get a lot of people who are like well i'm just gonna go back to playing single player fallouts you know four yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. no 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 I, that's that's probably what they're gonna head for is like okay well it's like okay you don't like the multiplayer aspect it's like yeah i don't really like the fact that there's people playing in fallout with me yeah there's it's other like, people. Oh, okay well then <laughs> yeah it's like oh well uh it's okay. You can just go back to Fallout 4. It's probably going to be just as, like, using about the same engine as Fallout 4, just maybe update it a little bit. Like, cause you see the, you see the trailers, and it's like, what the, f this is, this is the Fallout 4, this is the Fallout 4 engine. Yeah. It has to be. You just look around, you're like, this is the Fallout 4 engine, but, like, updated. So, there's no way. So, four days from right now, which, by then, the podcast will be out, and it'll already be 400, estimated 400 hours worth of gameplay footage on fallout 76 um and there's been a lot of people who have already said stuff about it on their thoughts and for the most part it's been very positive um and people have said hey we've played it and i played it as a solo it's still good so i you know i don't know what to take away from that just one person's word uh, but i know especially a person Actually, that came you know to what? play test it because those are probably the really grateful people you know they're not gonna harp on it too much but i will say this though there's some games coming out here in a bit that i'm decently ready for I'm and i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it also i don't know what's I'm coming out at... but i feel like that's gonna be like a crisp christmas game that i play because knight showed me some footage of it and uh Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to basically be like GTA 5. The game's going to come out. It's going to have uh, first-person mode, which will be a first in the series and blow people's minds. And then, like, a couple months later, they're going to release Red Dead Online. You know, just well, like then, GTA. They, they, and then they'll put it on PC, probably. They've 100% stated that they're not going to... I, I don't think... Actually, I'm not going to say that. Well, but they've stated that for me, since it's just not coming. One had multiplayer, so it'd be like... Is Red Dead Redemption One even on computer? No, no. Yeah, then it's not probably. It's probably not coming to PC. It, it'll, it'll probably come to PC. No, one's not me, even on. There's such one's a not even market. on here. There's such a big market. You can't tell me they're not going to put it on PC. I want to see. Is it coming to PS4? It's gotta be. Red Dead Redemption. What game? What game came out for? Oh yeah, Spider Man. PS4. Everyone, yeah, Spider Man. Nuts over Spider Man. Yeah, people went nuts over Spider Man because you only put it on the PS4 and. Spider-Man, you can quote me on this. It'll be a great game, but if the longevity of it is not there, you'll see it for like twenty bucks this time next year. Not nah, all superhero games go for twenty bucks after a while, dude. It's not even because you need it's the longevity not even like a of it. Bit. So yeah, it's just it's a one-play game. Yeah, you don't need multiplayer for it. You know, it'd be cool, yeah. but I'd still be very rough to 
to do. I mean, they're just now figuring out how to get his web swinging to work after all these years. But, you know, I think what Insomniac is doing with Spider-Man is pretty good. But Sony must have gave them a lot of, like, actually, I, exclusive I, I'll, money just to actually, put it on. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, admit, I'll yeah. amend what I just said about hero games. Batman yeah. Arkham. Which one? It's... Oh god. I'll be honest with you, I like the la- the last one. It was Arkham Knight. Knight wasn't bad. I just bad. didn't like being confined to my uh my bat tank or whatever it was. It's not a Batmobile, it's a bat tank essentially. Oh, it was so much easier to Everything run. Everything else was really good. Oh, they realize that there was no like either A, you're gonna have to run around the city and like yeah. fly all around, which is hard because it was separated by was, like huge oceans between yeah. you and the map. Or B, you just get a fucking tank. And he just runs to the city blowing shit up and that's fun to me that's fun to me i had a good time i had a good time upgrading the tank fucking around with it i have it was really fun, fun with um i don't know what the mode is called it might just be a basic challenge mode but it's the one that adds in like you can play as uh robin you can play as catwoman you Night, can play nightwing as, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah nightwing um yeah that was a fun one that there's was a fun one. i don't know if there's joker um uh, oh uh azriel i think was one and then of course, um, uh, Red Hood. So, I I just I'm I'm just I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm not buying any. I'm not. I've yet to see, even like Fallout seventy six isn't cop. Like I mm-hmm. haven't pre ordered like I, the last game I pre ordered was uh, Video Game Tycoon <laughs> or Game Game, game Dev Tycoon. And that's because I love the game. I love what they're doing. And I and the matter of fact, they stopped updating it because they're like, we're done. This is it. The last update they did was like a they put in like new age PACs and like a switch mm-hmm. kind of version, and no, it's it's just you can respect it when you're like, all right, we're putting the game down, like we're not gonna update it unless it's a good update. We know it's gonna, be. yeah, yeah. And it's like Prison Architect pretty much said, all right, we're done. Like that's like when you're done, you're done. Like that's the, the game's over. Like you're just like, all right, now guys have fun with it, and they do. People have fun with it, mm-hmm. like Skyrim. Like I'm so like I think that I actually gonna have to like pre-order that new Skyrim game when it gets near. You mean Elder Scrolls? No, see, so yeah, 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 sorry, not Skyrim. Yeah. No, the new Elder Scrolls, yeah. I mean, like, there's I, like so many people that are like, it's not called Skyrim. There was an Oblivion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The people who tell me, the people who fucking say that uh, Morrowind or Oblivion were better, fucking idiots. And I'll say it to the day I die. Fucking Skyrim has the best campaign ever. Mm-hmm. God damn, it's so good. It's so good. Like the dragon and like the fucking uh, god the dragon board things like god it's just so much fun and there's multiple journeys and there's so many side quests and like uh, there lane last night I was harp on I was like you know, the only thing the fun thing to do is the main quest I mean have you tried the companions have you tried the thieves guild like mm-hmm. the, the companion like anything is so fun everything's fun in that uh, game I just crazy. wish they, I, the brotherhood's crazy mm-hmm. I just, I honestly wish they just added more weapons. Mm-hmm. Like I, I wanted a bigger diversity of weapons, kind of like what, uh, like if they had a diversity of weapons like Fallout Four did, where you can like customize them and shit, the game would be would have been like the best game of the century. And I would, I would, I would say that for the rest of my life, if it had that weapon customization. That uh, like I guess they, I guess enchantments kind of count, but not mm-hmm. really. Those are just kind of buffs. Like uh, I'm an aesthetic kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I love aesthetic. I, I like it when like, I upgrade something and it changes looks and it looks better. Like, kind of like Age of Empires, like when you upgrade the barracks, like you, I mean, you move up a uh, move like from like feudal to or from dark to feudal mm-hmm. and all the all the buildings like upgrade. That's awesome to me. I you love that Empire shit. Earth. One second, let me look real quick. I might have. It's not on Steam. It's a GOG game, sadly. <laughs> I don't know why it never oh, made it to fuck? Steam. Um, Probably because they shut off their green light. Uh, no, no, Empire Earth. Like, let me see when that came out. Oh, it's old as fuck. It's 2001. What yeah, the I would fuck? say that game's like. Let's see, Age of Empires. When did that one come out? That came out. Not too far from 97, that. it says? Yeah. Empire you know they're making a 4, right? 2001. Yeah. Make... Apparently, you want to know this... Do you know the story behind that? Not a clue. Uh, so, apparently, uh. What's his name? The guy in charge of Microsoft. Yeah. Bill. Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. There you go. So yeah. I can't remember his last name. I kept thinking Bill Murray. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, um, Bill Gates did an AMA on uh, Reddit. Like, ask me anything. And uh, he, uh, one guy 
asked, and there's a lot of people who are up, go, up, up voting his question was, uh, well, what about Age of Empires? And he was like, what do you mean? And apparently, all the que- like all the people who are asking questions, like, yeah, what about Age of Empires? Like, can we get a fourth one? Like, what, what's the what's the deets on that? And he said, I don't know. I have to look into it. And then a month after that, they announced Age of Empires four. So the, the community <laughs> is, the community essentially pushed a new game out, which is amazing because that's that's called game devs listening. That's called people yeah, listening. Right. That's good. Because I'm, I mean, I'm an, I, I would fucking buy it. I would sweep that shit. There's certain games in this world where if they made a new one, I would sweep it. Like if mm-hmm. they made a Pikmin four that wasn't that was just like Pikmin two and one, mm-hmm. but like better and had better Pikmin than fucking three, mm-hmm. I would sweep that shit. I would buy the console. I would I, sweep it. So I, I think alone. My I would swoop swoop game would be, um, you know, Halo Wars, right? Oh God! If they did a Halo Wars. But, but like better. with oh, no, there was already a Halo Wars too. But um, with Fallout, like in the Fallout universe, or Gears of War, um, that's what I've always said is I would love a Gears of War Halo Wars. Um, oh, so an RTS like Gears of War, yeah, um, okay. or a Fallout one. But there already was one with Fallout Tactics, so I would like it improved and actually like, you know, not rushed because it was it was it was during that time period where. They were like, we, we need a game right now. Like we right now. I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. The most mm-hmm. historical game I've ever seen and played in my life, like that was just hit on the fucking like head. Yeah. It was probably Rise Son of Rome. Yeah. I when that game I came out, shot. I know a lot of people were 50 50 on it. I was a hundred percent. I loved it. I do not regret buying it twice. I bought it once on the Xbox One when it came out, and then when they said it came out on PC, I bought it on PC. It wasn't as optimized at first, but it's actually really good now. The, yeah, it's really good. If they were to make maybe not even like a second one of it, essentially, uh, or maybe just like that. If they, uh, if they did like a prequel period. and they did like Sparta, yeah, like, I don't that know. would be like, and it was know. during the Peloponnesian War and like the yeah. Persian and, uh, and all that shit. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. I'd fucking love that. I really loved what they did with the gladiator mode stuff in the Colosseum, I guess I should say. Um because how that was real that was handled really cool where like you're just a stupid barbarian and then like boom, you're upgrading and you you know, you you start by walking up the the steps with your partner cuz it's two player co-op. Um you know, you both one guy might be more decked out than the other. Uh you guys have different like gods and deities so you have different like abilities you can get for more health or whatever or ammo or something like that um and the game itself, the game it's itself just, really wasn't that it's just, hard, it's just, but it was just it's really just a cool. historical context it's just yeah. like as a uh, as a history major <laughs> I, fucking, I get it no i fucking get yeah. it it's just a really good game and it's mm-hmm. historically accurate and it's it's be- it's it's aesthetically it's beyond beautiful yeah like i will hit it with this mark and this is my only complaint i'll ever have of it is it does get monotonous after a while. It's like, okay, slashing this guy. Yeah, okay, why button again? All right. It's very um, bland. Yeah. It's a little blah. It's yeah. a little blah. It did have a really cool ending, even though if it made you feel a lot like uh, Gladiator, the movie, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. give it that. It's like, you killed my daddy, and it's like, I'm back, and it's like, I'm going to kill you. And then I, I love the stuff with, like, Damocles and all that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the that, gods, like, trying, the gods trying to amazing. push him. That was amazing. And then, yeah, was this the one where the guy fell on, like, the, the knife or something on the statue? No, I, I, yeah, and, like, he, he said he wanted the statue to bleed, like, not bleed, uh, cry whine. Yeah. Like, how, just, like, one yeah. son, one son was, like, one of the... It was like the Emperor's sons. One was like an aristocrat, where he was like really yeah. shitty and like mean, and then one was a general. And, and the they're guys both are coming like... around, just stabbing you near the end or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great story, great game, great ending. Great yeah, and it got play. and it got shot on. They got shot on. It's only because of the mechanics. Yeah, it's because that one thing where it was like, okay, well, yeah. it's the same thing. It's got very positive. It's got an eighty-one percent on uh, Steam. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing people are allowed it i'm mm-hmm. guessing hopefully i don't know yeah actually i'm reading a review right now that says rise sun room is one of the most underrated games out there mm-hmm. the game is historically not accurate but the what yes it is you <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> what the look, in the, what the look into that one well okay no, no 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 when it comes to like 
I'll, I'll give it this. It's compared to actual events that have happened. No, does it like does it take all the real shit and put it out there? Yes. Like, does it like the gods are real? The the events are like the how the government works is real. Like how the emperor pretty much just took power and does whatever the fuck he wants power. That how the barbarians came out of fucking nowhere and just try to fucking kill you, mm-hmm. push back the Romans all the way. And it's it, it, Demelikis' story is just amazing, and how it's it, his, it's an actual story. So it, it's just really, I appreciate it. So for some reason, this game has a bundle with Hunt Showdown. So I don't know if they're made by the same people. Probably. Um, but that would actually be very interesting. Um, we just need we just need more Rome Crytek. games. Oh, it is made by Crytek. That explains yes, it why is. It's so good. Yeah, um, it's really good. We need more Rome games that aren't... Yeah, oh my god. Rome 2 now has a 21%. Jesus Christ, Rome. Poor Total War. I should not have said that. Never tell your fucking customers to go away. Ever. When has it ever worked out for a Fortune 500 company? Ever. No one... Like, when McDonald's got harped on back for the Super Size Me, mm-hmm. they, look, they, they didn't sit there and go, you know what? If you don't want to buy our food... If you don't, if you don't want to get fat, don't buy our food. That shit... Oh, they, what they did was they took away the super size, and they made their food healthier, which is shitty. They shouldn't have done that. That was like pretty much yielding to the people beyond belief because it is actually the people's fault. Mm-hmm. For like, they're like, that's like what Bill Burr said. He like walks up to a cashier. <laughs> oh, I, I would have bought a sandwich or I would have bought a salad, but they didn't have it. <laughs> so I guess I'll take fifty Big Macs. Thanks, <laughs> thanks McDonald's. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just. You, but with this stuff, it's like our complaints are real. <laughs> the complaints real. Like we don't want we don't want women in battlefield or battlefront or battlefield. Yeah, there we go. We don't want sh- we don't want shitty like inclusions because they want to make SJWs feel important. I just it's I don't know. I give credit where credit's due. I'm not gonna give you credit because you think you're being all perfect by putting in a fucking girl into a World War II game, and it's like. It sounds actually the way I said it sounds really bigotry, but like it's just it, it's just the way they went about it. It's just so unreal. Like don't like that's the guy the guy who quit the president guy I forgot his name fucking like quit because uh, for Battlefield they, Five right? Yeah, Battlefield Five. Yeah, like he 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 literally told him to just go away, don't buy the game, and he left. He just yeah. left. <laughs> he left because everyone gave him so much hate because they're mm-hmm. so dumb as shit. I, I agree with them. I'm I'm totally with them. Fuck that guy. He shouldn't have said that. And the lady who said that thing on to- from Total War. I hope she. I hope she's put on like fucking probation. You can't say that to people. Was it Patrick uh, he... Soderlund? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he he, he, pretty, he was the main exactly. guy who told all the. Co- he he made that PR reference or PR uh, release where he was like, if you don't like it, don't buy the game. And then he kind of left because everyone just it just like things are erupted on him i think my favorite excuse kind of ties in also with uh the whole rome 2 thing um was the whole we have a historical game even though it is not historically accurate and it's like well then just say you have a game that's you know fictional based around roman era you know like rise yeah yeah. but like (laughs) Exactly like Rise. Like it's I think the you, Rome Two thing was handled poorly because they didn't look into it and been like, This guy is literally has the worst luck. Like it is a one in a millionth scenario and it's like not even that big of a deal. And it depends on the civilization you play as. So like Like if if they came out with, with evidence. Yeah. If they came out with evidence like that guy in that video did where he was like, This is impossible. Like this this yeah. these odds are like you shouldn't have not gotten all girls. Unless he went in and changed the files yeah. to do this, like Yeah. The, like um what was I gonna say? Yeah, he, if if they just came out and said these civilizations have women as generals because historically and they bring out references for people to look at, mm-hmm. these civilizations did have women leaders. You can say that shit. And uh if they just came out and say if they just came out and say that shit, you wouldn't have gotten in trouble at all, mm-hmm. at all. And uh, and they just didn't do that. They ju- they just came out and said, if you don't like it, don't play our game. And they got really defensive mm-hmm. in the wrong way. If you want to be defensive, also be offensive. Like, uh, it's just people taking it the wrong way and people doing things like they shouldn't say dumb shit like that. Mm-hmm. And 
it's just I don't know. It's turning the whole indie platform into a real shit stain. Mm-hmm. And the AA the AA settings already shit, but the indies are kind of taking them off. I mean, I don't know, buddy. Arma three is pretty dope. I'll get that. But uh, that's gonna wrap it up here for our regulator talk. It's been nice having you, my friend. Nah, it's been nice being yeah. here. And we'll see you next time.